It's become a St. Louis phenomenon, crowds of up to 800 people packing theaters for midnight movies. These film fanatics turn Hollywood's near duds into cult films, films that draw devoted followers time and time again. Since the people keep coming back, the movies keep running for months, sometimes for years. In the first part of his series, Cult Films, Hollywood's Magic, Nelson Hauer examines these movies. They come to cheer their heroes, boo the villains, and talk back to a fantasy on film. Every Friday and Saturday night, at midnight no less, almost 700 moviegoers flock to the longest running film in St. Louis box office history, the Rocky Horror Picture Show. When it was first released six years ago, the movie was a disaster. But now, over 500 showings later, Rocky Horror is the hottest cult film in St. Louis and the nation. How many times now have you seen this? 343 times. This is uh, my 72nd. Again and again, the fans swarm to the theater to participate in the ritual of cult films, an event that offers the crowd an unrestricted opportunity to do their own thing. The films that tend to attract or be considered cult films tend to help people move a, more away from the normal end of the continuum that society sanctions, for example, and do it with permission. People, I think, in a kind of massified society lose a sense of community and sometimes the, well, I think the social rituals that once went with neighborhood and with church and even with politics have broken down. Um, it's a, a late night phenomenon. Uh, ideally, the mystique puts itself together, you know, sometime between 12 midnight and 2 in the morning. Uh, it seems to me that what we now call the cult film is probably a post-1960 phenomenon. In 1968, a group of Pittsburgh commercial makers produced Night of the Living Dead, a quickly made low-budget horror film. But the movie wasn't discovered by cultists until the mid-70s. The popularity of a, a cult film comes with time. It takes a, a long time for a picture to uh, build its own audience. Eraserhead is one of the newer films to achieve cult status. This 1978 black and white release is an eerie, dimly lit, avant-garde movie about a man whose towering pompadour leads to his demise. But it's a musical science fiction spoof that's been drawing crowds up and down Delmar for almost five years. Tomorrow night, I'll take you inside to the Rocky Horror Ritual. For the Channel 4 Newsroom in University City, this is Nelson Hauer. Like most cult films, it was a box office bomb when first released in St. Louis six years ago. But now, the Rocky Horror Picture Show is the undisputed king of cult films. Friday and Saturday midnight showings are in their record-shattering 196th week here in St. Louis. Rocky Hara has raked in over $30 million on a $1 million investment. In part two of his series, Cult Films, Hollywood's Midnight Magic, Nelson Hauer takes us to what has become a weekly ritual for many cultists, the Rocky Horror Picture Show. You're one of the mill love story, it's not. A classic Hollywood musical, it's not. Popular, it definitely is. Six to seven hundred fans have lined up outside this theater to see the Rocky Horror Picture Show. This strange sight has become a familiar one for University City residents over the last five years. That's how long the movie's fanatical following has been turning out. You've been coming down here for three years, right? About three years now. Why? It's fun. How much longer do you think you'll be doing this? Oh, a couple years. As long as it's here. First time and the audience, oh, it must be great. It has to be great. The crowd doesn't come just to watch the film, but to be a part of it. And a handful of hardcore fans come dressed as their favorite characters. Just a little bit naked the first time. How do you feel now? Just like I'm at the beach, except it's a different time of day. I mean, this isn't dangerous. This is, what, 10 bucks worth of makeup you buy, you buy a dress, you buy fishnets. And uh, you go out and you have a good time. You shock people. It's the shock element of this that really, really makes you feel good inside because you're shocking people. But soon, the real shock was the box office tallies. Rocky Horror was packing them in. 
Eight years ago, Australian Richard O'Brien wrote Rocky Horror as a London stage play. O'Brien, who co-stars as Riff Raff in the film version, told me from his London home why he thinks the gathering is such a devoted one. Uh, the thing I like very much about it is that it's, it's, uh, it's become a little family group and that does, doesn't frighten me at all. It's, it's, it's a thing that people will go through, you know. The audience roars its approval of Tim Curry, who stars as a mad transvestite doctor, Frank N. Furter. Curry visited the St. Louis Theater when the Rocky Horror Run was in its infancy. The movies are very, very stultifying medium now. I mean, most, mostly one actually sort of sits there and, and goes into the screen. We actually were trying to come out of the screen into the audience. The audience joins in with the film, lighting matches to help their screen heroes find their way through the dark and constantly exchanges dialogue with their idols. Then the audience does its Transylvanian version of the twist, the time warp. Just a jump to the left. At about 2.15, a contented audience leaves the theater. Despite the evening of unusual antics, most experts are not concerned with the bizarre goings on. Parents know that they're in a movie theater protected and not going out and doing all the nasty things that young people may tend to do. But now they're in a protected environment watching a movie. What could be so bad about that? We don't rarely have a call down here of any problems whatsoever. What about you? Or do you ever go in and... Oh, uh, yeah. I watch the show. It's a lot of fun. It's, it's a nice flick. Just about everyone would agree that the Rocky Horror is just basically harmless fun. But tomorrow, we'll take you to a controversial cult film many experts say is far from harmless, The Warriors. For the Channel 4 Newsroom in University City, this is Nelson Hauer. A New York gang marches defiantly down the boulevard, would-be sultans of the street. It's this ugly shadow of violence hanging over the Big Apple that was the inspiration for Saul Urich's 1965 novel, The Warriors. The screen version was produced two years ago. This movie pits the Warriors against such colorful gangs as the Boppers, the Hi-Hats, and the Furies. I want them all. I want all the Warriors. It's an evening of survival as the Warriors try to get from the Bronx to their native turf, Coney Island. Banned in many theaters throughout the country, this controversial cult film once again raises the question, will violence on the screen encourage the same behavior on the streets? Violence and filmmaking is long known to create violence in society. Aggressive, aggressive people create aggressive people, create aggressive people. It's like the mother or father hitting their kid and saying, I told you not to fight. You know, it's for the fun of it. We're nothing really like this, no gangs or nothing like that. This attracts more of the people rebelling when this first came out was all the violence in it and the fact they're taking a street gang and making them into heroes. To me, it's kind of like when you go to it, you sit there and you see all this stuff that's happening, you know, you, nothing like that, you know, whatever happened to you, but it kind of brings back old memories of the gang at school. It's the notion of unrestrained group power that authorities are concerned about. They're worried that individuals might be encouraged to commit acts in a gang they might not do on their own. I'm sure there's a uh, danger, we all know that um, modeling or people watching other people do something, whether it be in a film or watching a boxing match, those people tend to become more aggressive or tend to become more pleasant, depending upon what they're watching. What about the violent aspect? Do you think it's too violent? Uh, I don't think it's violent enough. It's just a rowdy movie, you know? You just, I mean, you don't, no one goes in looking for fights. Some people do. There's fights afterwards. Police say there have been no problems at the St. Louis Theater, where the Warriors just finished a three-week run. But in New York, street gangs rioted inside and outside the theater when the film was shown. Despite the violent overtones, and maybe even because of the violent overtones, the Warriors is a box office bonanza. Tomorrow, I'll show you what happens when Hollywood tries to cash in by manufacturing a cult film. For the Channel 4 Newsroom, this is Nelson Hauer. You're blinded by romance, you're blinded by science. As we've seen this week, cult films slowly develop their own following, months, sometimes years after being first released. In the conclusion of his four-part series, Cult Films, Hollywood's Midnight Magic, Nelson Hauer shows what happens when an overzealous studio hangs the tag of cult film on a movie. Yes. 
This sequel has everything going for it. Catchy tunes, wild costumes, some stars from the original flick, and its screen predecessor is still enjoying a five-year run in St. Louis. But so far, cult film fans say shock treatment is no Rocky Horror Picture Show. Not as good as Rocky. Wasn't as good. Rocky wasn't meant to be a cult movie. It just turned out that way. I think they tried to make shock treatment a cult movie. The shock treatment was a try by, by Fox to recreate a cult film. They tried originally to release it as a commercial film, and it did very poorly. And then they took the picture and tried to force it into becoming a cult film by releasing it at midnight in most major areas. It was uh, unsuccessful. How long has shock treatment been running here? Uh, four weeks. How's it been doing? It's averaging, oh, about 20 to 30 people per show. Richard O'Brien, the creator of Rocky Horror and Shock Treatment, says he didn't set out to make Shock Treatment a cult film. He says cult status is earned. I think you'd be very foolish if you wanted to try and create a cult. I think that, that would be patronizing. And uh, uh, I don't think you should ever set out to do anything like that. It's like painting a picture and saying it's art before you finished it. Shock treatment is no longer running in St. Louis, but O'Brien feels that maybe in a few years, if the movie is released again, it could draw the same cult following as the Rocky Horror Picture Show. After all, Rocky Horror bombed when it first came out. History shows it takes time for films to reach cult status, and film historians and fans agree that the phenomenon of cult films is still going strong. For the Channel 4 Newsroom, this is Nelson Howard. Hmm.